Today is something different. Well, we're going to do a CB radio as well, and that's going to be a Maxcom 4E. Christmas Day afternoon, I think we're going to be doing a SATCOM base station. They were Cybernet CPT only. I bought some, and they've all been messed with, and they're all now broken. So they're going to have to be unmodified in inverted commas, so you know what's coming and sorted out perhaps we'll get one done perhaps we won't i've only got one church service to do and so that'll be 10 o'clock so i'll be clear after lunch and lunch will no doubt be a, a microwave meal so i keep getting questions how do i wire a mic um and it's so easily sorted on a uk cb radio there are some exceptions but on the whole, here's a second-hand piece of paper. You have got four connections. You've got the microphone audio. And that goes one connection, which is the negative. You'll say ground. One side goes to a switch. This is so that in, you can use a telephone handset on CB radios, which were popular in the 1970s and early 80s. So the actual receive audio comes up to the mic, which enables you to use a telephone type handset. I think High Gain did one. That's one I remember anyway. People always wanted to pretend they had a car phone, and now you want to avoid the fact you've ever thought of having one. I don't have a mobile phone, you know, best way. Um, so that goes to a switch, and that's the audio hot, to use an American term. And that goes to the CB. The ground also goes to a switch, but it's a changeover switch. So we'll take that to there. And the normally closed contacts are for the receive wire to the radio. This one is your transmit. So it jumps over and that's TX. So that's the normally open contact. And then, this wire, which went to the ground, is the shield. So we know that's mic hot, mic audio. And that shield is wrapped around that. Otherwise, you'd introduce hum and losses. So that goes down to the, there. So now... We've got audio, RX, TX, and ground. That's it. So, here's a brand new mic. We buy mics uh, in three, buy all standard mics. These We find these work the best. You never see policemen with echo mics, do you? And fire brigade with... Fire won't go to control. Whoa, 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 whoa. What points is that? It's all silly. So I'll never get it. And when we open this cable up, and I'll just use some cutters. I could use a knife. They're all much of a muchness. They might use different colour wires. So we open that up. And on this microphone, we've got a red wire a black wire, the obvious shield, just cut that away, so you can see we've got red, black, I'm even going to zoom in on that for people who still haven't got it, wrong, wrong camera, even though I've got the only one on, so, 
black on these mics handily goes to receive. The red on these mics goes to transmit. And then we need to just untwazzle, there's a good word for a Wednesday. The shield was an audio cable. There we go. And we don't want any of that lurking to short anything out. And then we can just twist that together. So now we've got our four wires. And a lot of you viewing this will have known all this for 30 something years. But I think we've got some people who are with this lockdown this year who are newer to this interest. And this, this is the same for business radio um, to some degree. You don't often have receive. And it's the same on amateur radio to some degree you may not have uh, receive. So we know that's receive. We know that's transmit. We know that's audio. And we know that's ground. But supposing you had a totally unknown microphone which you found you'd got. And I, I just can't... It's what's on the floor. There's an old curly lead here on the floor. This is a random curly lead. We'll just take the camera back. Just in case this is different and calls me a liar. Because always can be a different colour. Let's see what we've got under here. I mean, this will be 35 years old. Okay. So we've got some different colours. We've got red. We've got white. And in this case, look, the this black wire is the one surrounded by the shield. So that is the audio. Not any of those. There's no messing about trying to find which it is. It's obvious. Chances are that red would have been transmit. But there's a very, very quick way to find out which with your test meter. And don't tell me you haven't got a test meter when you can buy them for £2.99 off AliExpress. So here's a, not, uh, here's a, a sub-20-pound Aldi one. We've, we've got Avo 8s, yeah, yeah. Don't go down the fluke avenue, but we've certainly got Avo 8s and we've got um, other calibrated instruments. And in, in this country, the Avo 8s industry standard. So we'll put it, we could put it onto continuity. So that when you put the things together, you get a beep. So we know... Let's just get the... Uh, Conductor showing. I shall put the soldering iron on ready. So we know that shield is earth because it always is. So if I went across these wires, if we go to the black, I, I know that that's the receive. So if I go across still holding the earth on and red let's move that out of the way and then press transmit which is fun when you're holding two probes there we go and if I go across audio chances are it's about 600 ohms we want it in a different scale so it shows a short circuit when we press transmit So we got a reading, but it didn't show us a short 600 ohms. So I'll press it again. It's 469 ohms. So we know that's the insert, which is what the microphone itself is called, the microphone insert. So with that information, we can pick any random mic. And I just don't have any to show you, but I had that old lead. You throw them all away. Especially the ones with non-UK brands on. Yeah, so... Um, you can always tell which wire goes where. So, 
just to recap, the one with the shield around it is always the audio. So that only leaves you with two, doesn't it? Because you know the shield's the, the ground, the earth. So you're only two question mark ones, and which is transmit and which is receive. And straight away, you can, as I said, you can put your meter on there. And that is obviously the ground, uh, sorry, is obviously the receive. And that one in this case, we just press the transmit button and it becomes the transmit. It's dead easy to find out. So where do you wire it on your radio? Well, these charts are readily downloadable from the internet. And I, I did one called Taking the Mic, I think the article was, about 1983-1985 for Citizens Band magazine. And that's readily downloadable too. Um, I don't know whether I did use my own name uh, or whether I used um, Tango 21. But anyway, there it was. So these charts are readily available. And this is where the confusion comes from people. What does all this mean? Well, I've explained what it all means. So we're going to be wiring a 5-pin DIN plug for a Maxcom 4E. So we can look up Maxcom 4E and it's number 9. So diagram number 9 shows us that with the mic plug taken apart and facing you, and I'll do this in front of you, it's audio, screen, transmit, receive. So in this cable's example, audio is the one which was covered by the shield, so it's the yellow. The screen is the braid. Transmit turned out to be red, and receive turned out to be black. So had we been using that old crummy cable which I found on the floor, in this one, remember the shield was all around that black wire. So audio would be black, screen is obvious, we don't know what transmit and receive because it's chopped off at the other end. But chances are it would have been red to transmit and white to receive. So easy to find out, easy to meter through. And if you haven't got a, some cheapo meter, go and spend £2.89 on one. So what we're going to do is do a 5-pin DIN. And we buy these high-quality uh, Rian ones, which are part of New Tricks. Because I can't stand those 12 pence plastic things you get intended for the hi-fi or the lo-fi market. I'm good at throwing these packets away with parts in them. Now, if we're doing one of those four-pin mic plugs, which is the most popular, we have some heat shrink tubing, and we'll cut a bit of that off, because otherwise the cord grip doesn't grip. Here's a plug which has been discarded, uh, and unless you have that on there, the lead is too thin and it won't clamp properly. And incidentally, if you've ever come across a plug with the little screws missing, Knights at Curtin and Lindsay sell the teeny weeny screws, as they call them, and the other screws as well. I think they're about 25 pence each, but they do sell them. And that can save you having to buy another mic plug. On these ones are gold-plated pins. And although they're not a locking thing, I've never pulled one out. They're quite tight. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to remember to put the boot on. So we'll thread that through. Sometimes these can be a, bit, a little tight and you can put some something like WD-40 on just to help it slide over because you've got rubber against rubber there. So what we're going to do, these are, not, these are actually too long for this. And ideally, we would sleeve this... Um, braided one, the, the shield, so that it doesn't short against anything. But you know what? I've come in here and I can't for the life of me see any any sleeving. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm just going to solder that up. So just, I'm going to take that off just so you can see. 
that's the clamp it just goes back on so just like the diagram showed wherever I put it so that's the pin end which goes into the radio so from the solder pin end going to be audio screen transmit receive and then the final pin is nothing no connection and you'll look at the pin numbers and it's one two three four five you say why on earth is it like that well back in the 1950s when the three pin dins came out they were mono Remember, it's invent in, in, in designed for audio connections. And so you've got record and playback for a tape recorder and ground. So in those days, ground was always two. And I can't remember which way round it is, but one, one's, either one or three is recorded and the other one's playback. It's easily to look up. And when stereo came around, they did the five-pin ones, and so they fitted it around. So your right-hand channel was four and five record and playback whereas the mono channel became the left hand channel of one and three so that's why the pins are in a funny order so we'll just solder that up and uh, pity chippy's not doing this because he's better at it than me i'll just go back on to record because there's something else i'm going to mention to you all that is the solder we use now I accept that we're in the trade and we can therefore buy the lead solder which works better than the lead free solder and I understand why they don't want to put uh, lead solder in things which are disposed of. Um, bearing in mind our main business is in church pipe organ restoration and so we're used to uh, working on things that are expected to last 500 years we use a thin gauge solder I've got some thicker one here it's not that thick um, but we've got that thicker one but that's one of these red lead free ones that came with a with a soldering iron kit or something at some point but this is the 6040 leaded solder and it's 0 0.71 millimeter diameter which is 0 0.028 of an inch And I'm fed up of using scraps of Mr. Chippy's solder, so we'll have a new one. Subject to being able to find the end. I might have been better off using label remover to do that. So, it's quite a thin solder when you compare it. Because if you've got what my old boss at Nottingham Radio would have said, John, he'd have said that that thick solder you buy, I'm talking about the rosin cord one, not plumber solder, but that thick one, he says that's telly solder, as in television sets. And he was thinking back from the days when they had mains droppers in them and valves. So, what I'm going to do is we'll just apply solder, which is called tinning, the conductors. And that one's twisting together a bit further. If you see me missing and you think I'm some kind of twit, I want you to know that actually I do have an eye problem. I was born unable to see three-dimensionally. 
So it doesn't affect me at all, apart from trying to sometimes coordinate. So it doesn't stop me building pipe organs, servicing two-way radios, driving or anything like that. But it just uh, would be a problem climbing up ladders and getting back down again. <laughs> right, um, so we'll now tin the... The actual thing itself, you've got these solder buckets. We don't need to bother with the end one. So we're applying the heat to the metal of the plug. So back to the diagram and the first one I'll put on is receive. Never blow on it or you end up with a dry joint. Um, what else have we got? Transmit. And the next one, which we're going to do, is audio. So it's the yellow one. And I'll see if we can dig up some sleeving from somewhere. So we're, we are having building work done here. And it's all with this COVID-19, everything's kind of on half hold. So everything's been put away. There's 68 boxes, 18 litre very useful boxes, in a shed outside of all the things that we would normally use, like solder and parts and so on. So I want to deal with that a bit better. I might have some heat shrink sleeving on here which is better than nothing we would normally use some uh, sleeving which we bought in especially for the purpose this is a bit thick but it might come down to size with the heat applied For some reason it seems that fraction too long. So there we are with that all properly soldered. So we've got that sleeving on, it didn't melt uh, and go nasty. So we've got the, just as the diagram shows on nine, We've got nothing, blacks receive, reds transmit, shield, and then the yellow, which is the audio. So then, we just need to put the clamp on this, crimp the lead against that, and I haven't got crimps on here, so I'll tell you what, we'll use the pliers, Because not everybody's got the t the crimp tools, so no point showing off that we've got the posh one. So just do it like that. It's only for us, it's not for a customer. So there we go. And then that, hopefully, will slide back up there. And we've got the little hole there to put the little screw in, not as little as the four pin plugs.
so there we go we've done the plug so it's easy to meter it through to see what the connections are of course it's complicated if you start having mics with up down plug uh, up down buttons and things like that but most of the CB radios for the UK is that arrangement so I hope that was of interest to some of you who uh, have never been involved until recently and don't know about that and sorry to all those people who've done it for 35 years. And we'll follow on with a Maxcom 4E. Thank you for watching.